Shalom, Kurt Landry here for Prophetic Pieces. One of the questions that you're asking, especially after I prophesied that there was gonna be major breakthrough during the season of Hanukkah, and the question is this, what is the prophetic significance of Hanukkah? And uh, how does the Hanukkah story play out in today's culture? Well, it's the key. I really feel like the biggest word of warning that the Lord's given us in the last two years has been out of the book of Haggai. And the book of Haggai talks about how uh, we take care of our paneled houses and we've neglected the house of the Lord. Well, that's kind of the story of Hanukkah. The story of Hanukkah is, is that the temple had been overtaken by Antiochus IV. Uh, literally, there were Hellenized, which means Jews that were wearing priestly garments, but preparing like, uh, behaving like heathens in the temple and, uh, and doing all sorts of disgusting things. And so the temple was defiled, it was compromised, and there was no reconciliation of redemption between God and man. But yet there were observant Jews and uh, they couldn't do much about it because Antiochus IV, obviously, the ruling army of the time, was controlling the nation. So the, the, the guards and the uh, uh, come to a little town called Moda'in, which is just outside down the hill from Jerusalem. And they come in on Shabbat to a family called the Maccabees. The leader of the uh, family is Judah Maccabee, and he's an older man. And they come and they said uh, to, to Judah, it's Sabbath and you're going to sacrifice a pig on the altar. And he says, no. He said, we've had enough. We're not going to do it. So he and his sons, they battle against the garrison that's there. And they end up killing all the soldiers. And now the fight is on. And so they can't just stop there by killing the soldiers, by refusing to defile the uh, altar that they have at their house at Moda'in with, with uh, slaughtering of a pig. And then what they have to do is they have to make a decision that it's not enough that we've just overcome in our town and in and, and our home. We've got to help restore this temple because the spiritual realm and the atmosphere is terrible. So what do they do as they get other Jews that come together? They're called now the Maccabees, which in Hebrew means the praise hammer team gets together. And because they're so small and outnumbered, they go out at night. They literally hike up the side of the mountain from Moda'in into Jerusalem, and they eventually come in and they overtake the temple. And when they overtake the temple, they get in there and there's a statue of Zeus. There's all this defilement. The great menorah is in there and there's no anointing oil and so they go in and they cleanse the temple and they sanctify it and now it's time to be able to light the great menorah and when they do they have to make a decision there's one carafe of oil left that will light one day or do we take oil that's not consecrated or sanctified and light the other days. And so what they chose to do was to go ahead and light the first day with the sanctified oil, according to the law of Moses. And then as the legend has it, then uh, in the book of Maccabee, then what happens is each day the carafe fills up with consecrated oil and the Lord provided oil all for the eight days until the new beginnings. So why is this a practical story for us? Well, for us, what's the practical story is what is the condition of God's house? What is the condition of the church? What is the condition of the spiritual atmosphere? Has our temples been defiled with compromise? Are we allowing this Antiochus IV, this Hellenized spirit, to take over the way that we worship? Have our, is our worship unrecognizable? Are we being challenged? Is the enemy coming into our house and say, listen, you're going to sacrifice your children on the altar, so to say. Are you going to protect your children from all the corruption and the videos and the different things that are coming out that are a direct assault on, on their very Christian values and the Judeo-Christian values that are in them? Is, is, this, is this today, is, why is this story, the question that you're asking is, is, is this story play out in the culture today? Absolutely. Your other question is, what do we need to be aware of in spiritual warfare taking place? 
And how can we be like the Maccabees? Well, first of all, you need to sanctify your own house before you can go out and try to sanctify the White House. So if you want to take care of your house, so to say, then you need to make sure that your life is in alignment, that your family is in alignment, your church is in alignment, your state, so to say, your county, the things that you are over in your place are in alignment with God. And what does that mean is, is the anointing, the oil, which is symbolic of, of Hanukkah, is that oil pure or do you have a counterfeit oil is it a pure oil did you go through the the feast of of trumpets did you did you have that awakening blast from Rosh Hashanah did you cleanse your house during that that uh, feast of of atonement that uh, Yom Kippur have you had that experience have you renewed your marriage covenant with your with your family and with your Lord at Sukkot at the Feast of Tabernacles now we're in between the Feast of Tabernacles and Hanukkah we're preparing for the battle we're preparing for this eight days of restoration we're preparing for that servant candle to be lit with a holy anointing oil we're preparing for eight days one L1 God two covenant three are we going to be restored body, soul, and spirit? Four, are we going to be restored to open doors? A four of Dalit. Five, are we going to receive grace when we go through the open door? Six, are we going to receive a consecrated new resurrection of things all been made new as a man? And six, seven, are we going to walk in that perfection of the power of the Holy Spirit as one new man? And eight is new beginnings. Are we going to walk in the new beginnings? It's time. This Hanukkah, you need to join us at KurtLandry.com. Join us at House of David. This Hanukkah, we're going to be releasing the resurrection power anointing of God, I believe, for the next 10 year season of time. Why is that applicable? Why is that warfare true? It's because God is pouring out supernatural anointing oil to separate you from the ways of the world so that you can walk in that supernatural mindset of the Lord, that you can get away from traditional thinkings that might have poverty or lack or defeat in them to that supernatural co-heir in Christ, more than a conqueror, all things are possible. There's an anointing that breaks the yoke. Hanukkah is a time that breaks the yoke. People ask, what is the significance between Hanukkah and Christmas? Well, I would say, and, and can you celebrate both? Well, at our family, we are what we call Hanukkah Christmas Jews. We celebrate both because we were raised as Gentiles, discovered our Jewishness, and we've lived as long as believers believing Jews as we did as believing Gentiles. But what's the, uh, the, the, the storyline for us in our house is Jesus is the light of the world. That's what he proclaimed at Hanukkah. Jesus celebrated Hanukkah. Jesus decreed that he was the light of the world. This is a season to arise and shine and let your light shine. There's a tree at Christmas. I know about the pagan roots of, of, of everything. There's pagan roots everywhere you go, but it's how you believe. I look at the Christmas tree and realize, and I know that Jesus was born at Sukkot, at the Feast of Tabernacles, that the that Jesus became flesh and tabernacled amongst us. We know that he wasn't born even in a manger. We know he was born in a sukkah. We understand that. But that's up for you to do research, and we've researched it, and that's what I believe. But I also believe that every Christmas tree I see, it's not pagan. It reminds me of the tree that he hung on, that the light of the world hung on a tree to bring a gift to each and every one who calls on the name of the Lord and praise God for that gift that hung on the tree that we're not going to hell. Praise God that gift that hung on a tree heals our diseases. Praise God that gift that hung on a tree that, that for us, that Lord that we are more than a conqueror and we are by his stripes, we are healed. I think the biggest thing to understand that anytime the world comes together to, to celebrate the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua the Messiah, uh, Ben David, anytime we all come together that we need to rejoice that the God of heaven and earth and the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob sent us, sent us a lamb of God to bring restoration and to bring peace on earth and peace to all men. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you now in the name of Yeshua. And Lord, I thank you that the significance of Hanukkah is this, that Lord Father God, you're giving us the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God to cleanse our temples 
that the light of the Holy Spirit might be lit in us, that we might carry his glory, carry his power and his dominion. And Lord, I thank you for that in Yeshua's name. So praise God. Thank you so much. If this has blessed you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share and happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and may God bless you. Know that we love you and we bless you. And we thank you. If you're considering a year-end gift, thank you for considering Kurt Landry Ministries. We will, we will we'll bless you and you're a blessing to us. Thank you so much and shalom.